And can I thank the, the Minister for her statement today and in particular the appreciation of the committee's work and the recognition that uh, she thinks we actually have provided some sensible recommendations. Um, but I have a few questions. I think it's been pointed out, and I think it's important for us to remember this is not about leaving the EU. That's done dusted. We all know that. General Lecture made that clear. But this is about how Wales can benefit once we have left the EU and to ensure that any trade deals that take place are to the benefit of the people of Wales and not detrimental to the people of Wales. And that's crucial to us to recommend, understand that. Forget the arguments. This is about our future and get it right. Um, and, Minister, in, in your statement, you, you identified a few things. I'm going to ask a few questions in relate to that. Um, you talked about uh, the JMC trade, and Dennis Chu has already raised the question of that. It is important how, how, how far we go in on that, because we were told in the committee many times that this was being discussed. We're still not there. We are weeks away from departing the EU, where negotiations will then start on the future relationship, and we need to understand where we are with that, and where the UK government is with that, and what they see it as. Because you know, Europe has got its own negotiators ready. Michel Barney has been appointed. He's appointed his deputy. Their side is ready. Where is our side in the sense of the devolved nations? And therefore, are we also having discussions with your Scottish counterparts to ensure that there's a unanimous voice together going into the meetings of JMC to, to put this on the agenda to make sure that Welsh and Scottish voices and Northern Irish, when they get into uh, an executive, are going to be heard as part of the negotiating process? Because I think it's been mentioned by the First Minister before, having an opportunity to have a say in the negotiating position is far more beneficial to all the parts of the UK than having been told at the end of it all. So having it said at the beginning, being able to go with it and therefore be part of it is going to be hugely beneficial to the whole of the UK. First stop. Uh, you also mentioned trade-offs. The question, I suppose, is what type of trade-offs will be acceptable? And will the government come back to the Assembly to discuss those trade-offs? Because what might be acceptable to the government may not be acceptable to the Assembly. Um, and I've got an example. For example you know, we talk about data. Data is an important commodity. But will data and transfer of data be one of those trade-offs? So will we let people have data, let businesses have data? But if you pass that data on to certain companies in certain countries, who knows where it ends up? So the question is, what is the trade-off? And will you come back to the Assembly with your consideration of what is acceptable as a trade-off? Uh, will the Welsh Government be reviewing EU laws and regulations? Because you, you mentioned regulatory alignment. And it is likely that in a future relationship we will diverge. Otherwise, why are we leaving if we're not going to diverge? So there will be divergence. But how will we in Wales look at those EU laws and regulations? And will the Welsh Government be acting through the SIs, because I think the First Minister mentioned that yesterday, to keep regulatory alignment where we have devolved responsibilities so that our exports can meet the still regulations that the EU will be operating, even if the UK doesn't keep regulatory alignment. Um, will it be operating through the Brussels office to strengthen the relationship with the EU? Because once we're outside the EU, we will not have a direct link into the EU, but the Brussels office becomes an important component of the role Welsh Government will have in setting up a discussion with the EU. We may, might, might not be negotiators, but it's always about influencing, talking, have an opportunity to expand our position so that the negotiating side on the other side of the table have a wider picture. Um, you've also talked in the statement about the stakeholder advisory group. Can I can ask where the information that you intend to give that will come from? Will that come from the UK government? So if you can give that information to the advisory group and ask for their opinions, will that be coming from, because it's all about the, on the negotiations? Where will they come from? Will the UK government be giving you the information, which you can give on the advisory group, and will you be allowed to share that with the Assembly? Because very often we are told sometimes that you know, governments give governments information and we can't pass it on because it's confidential. So how will we know what the stakeholder group is doing and is it doing it properly? How can we scrutinise those processes? Um, you've talked about the Trade Bill and the amendments, and it's been mentioned by Dev, you know, what happens and, and, and what happens if the amendments aren't accepted. Uh, but First of all, I suppose the first question is, is the new trade bill the same as the old trade bill? Because you know, we've seen changes in the, withdrawal, um, the EU withdrawal agreement bill. Do, we, do you have any indication as to whether there'll be changes in the trade bill? Because that trade bill did require an LCM. A new trade bill, an amended trade bill, might not require an LCM. 
So do we have, have we any pictures of where the trade bill is at this point in time, and is it going to be the same one? I think it is important for us to remember one thing, particularly in these benches. TTIP was a big issue. It was actually defeated by the European Parliament. They ruled certain things out. Uh, as mentioned in the investor state dispute settlements issue was a huge matter. And if, you know, it doesn't have to be the US, by the way, because Sweden is doing the Germany now. Um, we don't want a, rep a repetition of that. And therefore, there is an important aspect as to how institutions across the UK, the Scottish Parliament, the Welsh Parliament, have an opportunity to have a say on such events. I personally wouldn't want to see TTIP being acted in any agreement here. But there's a very strong possibility that that might be reintroduced by the Americans who, was off, as we all know, and Donald Trump said it in his inaugural speech, America first. And they will look to see exactly what they can do with that process. We need to be very wary of these matters. You winding uh, up, please? Yes, I will wind up, uh, Deputy mm -hmm. President Officer. Uh, it is important for us all to remind ourselves that what we are trying to do is ensure how businesses are able to operate beyond Brexit. And therefore, this, these discussions are crucial. Minister. Um, first of all, can I thank the committee chair for the really good paper that I, I was able to read over Christmas. I thought that was really useful. And I think uh, if people are interested in this issue, in particular the legal aspects of where we stand as, as a, a body here in the Senate, uh, I, I think that, that is very much uh, worth looking at. Um, just on the JMC trade, um, you know, I can't tell you every single moment we, an opportunity we have, we, we are pushing for that to be set up. One of the things that um, we are trying to do is um, to, to see if we can set up the terms of reference so that we're ready to roll uh, once it starts. I'm hoping, now that the election's out of the way, uh, that, that we will see some speeding up uh, of the situation. The key thing for me is that um, in the, 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 the commendations by the UK Parliament in the past, what they've said is that they want to see, the UK government wanted to see transparency and inclusivity as a core part of uh, how they negotiate trade deals. Well, it's not quite as transparent and as inclusive as perhaps we uh, would have liked to have seen, but listen, we are, are still... Uh, anxious and keen to make sure that we have a constructive uh, relationship. The other thing is, is that your other question was on devolved legislatures and to what extent we can work together. Well, uh, hopefully this cross-ministerial body will be a forum for us to do that and there are opportunities obviously for us to, to meet with the other devolved legislators prior to that. But it's not just about the devolved legislators. There's actually lots of different government departments that may not have the same priorities within the UK government uh, as the people leading on trade. So Leslie Griffiths, for example, very engaged in the, the, the future of agriculture. Now, they may have a different, uh, a different say and a different opinion on what that should look like that may not be the same view as, for example, the Treasury Department. So we've got to look for our allies uh, where we can in terms of this trade negotiations and that's why where this uh, flexibility um, w will come in and we need to make sure that we build up those those priorities there will be trade-offs um, flexibility and timings are things that we will need to bear in mind um, the more we diverge from the EU uh, in terms of regulations the more difficult it will be for us to trade with them so uh, I, I'm very clear that we in Wales would like to see that regulatory alignment uh, to remain uh, as far as possible because that means that 60% of our trade continues uh, to be able to access that market if they agree to that because it's not just about tariffs and all that, it's the non-tariff barriers that are as significant if not more significant. <coughs> On the Brussels office, I'll be going out to the Brussels office next week and hopefully have an opportunity to talk to them about how they can help to inform us uh, in relation to, to gaining intelligence from the Br Brussels side of, of things in relation to trade. Um, on the advisory group, um, I think it would be very difficult to imagine that we would be able to give information to uh, an external advisory group that is uh, not possible to give to assembly members. So uh, I, I would certainly think that would be a strange situation. But there is uh, a UK government advisory group that's been set up, and there is a Welsh person on that group. 
They don't represent Wales, but we are making sure that we have a relationship with that representative. Um, and in terms of uh, the, the trade bill, we don't yet know if the new trade bill will be the same as the last trade bill. Um, if it's continuity uh, of trade agreements that were there in the past, then obviously uh, it won't be such a problem. But if what they're suggesting is that they want to introduce new trade agreements, then we will want devolved bodies to absolutely have a say and a role in that process, uh, which uh, is slightly different. And on uh, TTIP, listen, this was a really big deal in terms of the negotiations between the EU and the United States. It, it all crashed and, and didn't work. But the, I've got no doubt at all that the United States government will be pushing to uh, include the investor state dispute settlement uh, role in a trade negotiation. And what that means is if an investor country feels it's being discriminated against, it can seek compensation, but not through the courts. It's through some very uh, opaque system that is not transparent. And that's something I certainly don't think that we would want to sign up to. Mandy Jones. 